Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of building a React progressive web application with Workbox. In the previous video, we went ahead and did the pre-caching. We looked at the demo where we, we were able to install the progressive web app. And in this video, we're going to continue further with our caching strategies. So let's continue. So the first thing I want to do is basically cache the Google fonts. So let's open the common recipes for the workbox. And as you can see that these are some of the examples for the Google fonts. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this one. And I'm going to paste that here. And I'll explain to you in a moment. We, oh, we need to use the register route. So for that, we need to install workbox routing. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the development ser the production server and then do npm install workbox routing. And just to show you workbox routing. So take a look at this workbox routing basically. Um, so we discussed in the previous video as to what service worker is and what it does for us. Basically, uh, is a script that runs in the background separate from your web page, which intercepts the request, the network request on the page. And based on our caching strategy, it goes ahead and responds to the browser with the cached content or directly from the network, right? So Workbox Routing is a module that makes it easy to route these requests, which helps us in our caching strategies. And take a look at how this routing is performed uh, for example, when a network request causes the service worker fetch event, which basically fetches the data from a request URL, it will attempt to respond to the request using the supplied route and handlers. Now, depending on the caching strategy, it will go ahead and uh, respond to that. So let's say there's a request from the network. Uh, the router gets the router of the same type, whether it's a get or post, and then it calls each route's match function so it base so let me just show you the example and if it's if it finds the matching route checks if there's a default handler if no then it falls back to the default handler uh, otherwise it calls that particular handle function and then it just follows this this process basically so take a look at this one first of all we have installed the package which is routing so i'm just going to pull the register route from the workbox routing here and take a look at over here so this is the register route and it's going to go ahead and look for the match so look at this example here so the router calls the each route match function so if the url match is found let's say if in this case if the url origin is fonts.googleapis.com then it's going to follow this strategy which is stale while revalidate again we need to pull this from the caching strategies. So take a look, workbox strategies. I'm gonna install it. Uh, let's discuss this stale while revalidate. So there are some caching strategies that are available. Workbox strategies package provides the most common caching strategies. So it's easy to apply them in your service worker. Uh, take a look at this one now. So stale while revalidate, right? So let me pull this up first. So when the register route is looking for a match, if origin is this one, it's going to follow this strategy, stale while revalidate. And this is just a cache name. So take a look at this stale while revalidate caching strategy. So how does it work? If the request comes, it's going to be intercepted by the service worker. It's going to look for that data in the cache. If it is available from the cache, it's going to serve it from the cache. If not, then it's going to serve it from the network. Even in the first case, let's say even if it's present in the cache, it will not only serve from the cache, but also still go ahead and make a network request and also put that in the cache. So this is to ensure that data is not stale. So although it is serving from the cache first, it is also updating the cache for the subsequent request. So take a look at this. So it says it allows you to respond to the request as quickly as possible with the cached response, right? So as quickly as possible. Network request comes, look for that information in the cache and respond as quickly as possible. If available, if the cache is available. If not, falling back to the network request if it's not cache. So then it's going to make a network request and you know serve that from the, from the network request if not cached. 
the network request is then used to update the cache so so the cache will still be updated in all cases so subsequent requests will be getting the fresh data as opposed to some implementation of stale while revalidate and this strategy always make a revalidation request so this is important it's always going to make a revalidation request even though it's going to serve it's going to look for the data it's going to look for the cached response first it is still going to make a network request that's why saying it will always make a revalidation request regardless of the age of the cache response uh, this is common strategy where having most up-to-date resources not vital to the application so we're going to use this in case it's okay to have the fresh data and the subsequent request all right and so we're going to go with that uh, and we'll come back and check the cache first request strategy as well so if you take a look at our code register route right so comparing with this one router gets the route uh, it's going to call the each route match function so this is our match function the first parameter right and it's going to do a match so if the origin is the url origin is matching this then it's going to follow this strategy which is stale while we revalidate which i already explained to you this is the cache name that we are using we're also looking for the fonts uh, static caching underline font files with cache strategy for one year in this case so you can if you want to define a particular cache if you want to define the age for how long it's supposed to be cached you can do that with the expiration plugin again we need to install another package for that called workbox expiration so npm install workbox expiration so i'm just going to import that import import expiration plugin from workbox expiration okay so this is going to take care of the expiration in seconds and this is basically the maximum entries which means uh, it's only going to cache up to 30 requests then you also have something called cacheable response plugin what, what this does is basically this want to ensure that uh, it doesn't cache any request that has failed because service worker won't really know whether that you know it's supposed to whether it's not supposed to cache the requests that have been failed that's why you have this cacheable re cacheable response plugin available and that is actually available in another package and that is called workbox cacheable response so let me go ahead and add that okay so i've added that so if you take a look at the workbox cacheable response so as you can see that when caching assets at runtime there's no one size fits all uh, rule that tells us the response is valid eligible of being saved and reused so that is why you can cache it based on the status code in this case i have put the status as 200 so in in case if the uh, response is successful only then go ahead and cache it coming back to the cache first uh, strategy which again i'm supposed to pull it from the workbox strategies so let's come back to that the font files are not going to be updated very often so that's why we're using cache first tra first strategy you will see in a moment that we're going to use the cache first strategy for images as well okay okay so what's the main difference between the two stale while revalidate and the cache first in the stale while revalidate request comes uh, it looks for the data in the cache reserves it from the cache if it's available uh, if not it's going to serve it from the network request even if it's not available in cache it'll still make a network request but this time it'll update the cache here is going to take a request look for that in the cache if it's available in the cache it's not going to make a network request at all and it's going to serve it from the cache if it isn't available in the cache then it's going to make a network request serve it from the network request but this time also update the cache so the main difference is that if the response is available from the cache it is not going to make a network request it is not going to update the cache the only time the cache is updated if the request is not fulfilled from the cache however in this case stale by revalidate network request will be made in all scenarios and cache will be updated it's just that the first time the, the the very first thing it does it looks for that data in the cache basically and serves it from there okay so i hope you get that 
Uh, I'm not going to discuss a network first approach. You can go ahead and read about this, but um, all right, awesome. So register route, look for this origin, cache first, which means look for the response in the cache. If it's available, serve it. And that's it, stop in there. Don't make any network request. But if it isn't available, make a network request, update the cache and, and serve the data from the network request. You have to ma make sure, in this case, we are saying that you have to make sure only cache the responses where the status code is successful, 200. And the age of this cache should be this expiration. And maximum entries, maximum number of requests to cache is 30. You can update this uh, if you want. All right then, so let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna say npm run serve. Okay, now go back, refresh. You can see that new update is available because we updated it. Click OK to refresh. The moment you do that, you can see that Google font style is, uh, style is available. Google web fonts is available. Uh, look at the name here, okay? The cache name we gave was Google font style sheet. And that's why, that's why we have it here. And here we gave web fonts. That's why, that's the name here. And these are the web fonts that have been cached, okay? Take a look at this one. Yep. All right, then. Brilliant. I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Uh, please do start my repository to support my work and do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Ed Sayed. And uh, do follow me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle is Coditech. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.